good afternoon students today we will be discussing the competency py 10.2 which is describe and discuss the functions and properties of synapse reflex and receptors we have already discussed about the synapses and receptors now we will be discussing about reflexes so already this lecture has been delivered to you previously before the lockdown but again i'll be repeating this lecture so talking about the specific learning objectives at the end of the session phase one mbb student should be able to uh, define reflex and outline the components of reflex are clearly he should be able to differentiate between monosynaptic and polysynaptic reflexes appropriately enumerate different spinal reflexes explain the physiological basis of stretch reflex and describe it in detail accurately he should be able to explain different spinal reflexes with their physiological basis correctly should be able to describe the role and structure of muscle spindle and golgi tendon organ appropriately explain the alpha gamma motor link neuron linkage give the role of higher centers and control of spinal reflexes accurately we should be clearly describe the properties of spinal reflexes able to explain the abnormalities associated with spinal reflexes so reflexes so let us define a reflex what is it exactly a reflex is an involuntary specific response to a particular stimulus that is it is a response which occurs unknowingly to a particular stimulus like somebody pricks you you immediately remove your hand from there so that is basically a reflex reflexes are of different types like reflexes are there which maintain homeostasis that is the autonomic reflexes that is reflexes which control the blood pressure the cardiovascular reflexes reflexes which control the heart rate respiratory rate and various digestive reflexes then there are other reflexes which are involved with the automatic action of swallowing sneezing your coughing and vomiting so these are also a sort of reflexes then there are reflexes which maintain balance and posture like the spinal reflexes then you have reflexes the vestibular reflexes then another type of you can categorize into brain reflexes or the reflexes in the higher centers of your body like they can be ocular reflexes or different types of brain stem reflexes so different neural reflexes are classified in different ways we'll take up one of the classification which is commonly used in this classification the reflexes are categorized into five different categories based on development nature of the resulting motor response complexity of the neural circuit involved site of information process and the lastly the clinical classification so the first category is based on the development but before that it should be very clear that these categories are not mutually exclusive they represent different ways of describing a single reflex now as per development the reflexes can be of two types innate reflexes or unconditioned reflexes or acquired reflexes or conditioned reflexes the innate reflexes are genetically programmed in you that is when you are born you are born with these reflexes then these example of these reflexes are pain withdrawal reflex chewing sucking licking etc then the second type of reflexes that is the acquired reflexes or the conditioned reflexes these are the reflexes which a person develops after birth or during the experiences occurring during the lifetime so these are known as acquired reflexes or conditioned reflexes now the second type of category is the 
reflexes based on the nature of the resulting motor response that is whenever this reflex is elicited what type of response you get. So we have two type of reflexes in these categories somatic reflexes that is the reflexes which result in the somatic responses and the second is visceral reflexes or autonomic reflexes that is the reflexes which result in the involvement of different viscera like blood pressure, heart rate etc. Then third type of uh, classification or third type of category is it is based on the complexity of the neural circuit involved that is monosynaptic reflex or polysynaptic reflexes. In the more monosynaptic reflex only one synapse is involved during the whole of the reflex like the example is of the stretch reflex. Then polysynaptic reflexes Polysynaptic reflexes in this there are multiple synapses involved, there are multiple synapses, the examples are like crossed extensor reflex, flexor withdrawal reflex and different spinal reflexes mainly. The last one is depending upon the site of information processing that is the central of the reflex, integrating center of the reflex is present where? Like if it is present in the spinal cord, it is called as the spinal reflex. If it is present in the brain, it is called as the cranial reflexes. So we have multiple reflexes in these two categories. So we will be discussing mainly the spinal reflexes. Now further the cranial reflexes are categorized depending upon the path in which the integrating center is present into cortical reflexes, the integrating center being the uh, cerebral cortex, cerebellar reflexes, in center in the cerebellum, midbrain reflexes, center in the midbrain and bulbar or medullary reflexes with the center in the medulla oblongata. The fifth type of classification is cl clinical classification. The reflexes can also be categorized depending upon this. So clinically when we are testing the reflexes it is basically either the superficial reflexes or the deep reflexes. Superficial reflexes when the superficial tissues are involved in the deep, when the deep tendon reflexes mainly are the example of the reflexes. In the superficial, different type of superficial reflexes which practically will also be elicited by you people. So superficial reflexes are like corneal reflexes, conjunctival reflexes etc. and the deep reflexes are like Tendon reflex, different tendon reflexes, ankle jerk, biceps reflex, triceps reflex, etc. So let us talk about the components of a reflex arc. A reflex has five components starting with receptor, sensory neuron, the integrating center, a motor neuron and the effector. The receptor can be any, it can be a specialized receptor or a free nerve endings. So uh, they respond to changes in the internal or external environment. The sensory neuron or the efferent neuron, it carries impulses from the receptor to the exon terminals and the integrating center, it is the region within the uh, central nervous system and depending upon the type of the reflexes, it can be uh, if it is a monosynaptic, so we have a single integrating center and then it can be uh, polysynaptic in polysynaptic because more than uh, two neurons are involved so interneurons are also involved. Here the impulses will be integrated, received and then the impulses will be sent or carried via the motor neuron or the efferent neuron to the effector. Effector <coughs> can be uh, any body part, it can be a muscle or a gland which finally responds to the motor nerve impulse. So uh, we can see here clearly the components of a reflex arc. The type of types of reflexes uh, depending upon the number of synapses involved are two monosynaptic or polysynaptic or what we call as multisynaptic. We say monosynaptic, mono means single so synapse, so we have only a single synapse involved only about the polysynaptic or multisynaptic reflexes. So there are more than one synapses involved. 
so the synaptic delay you can with the number help of the synaptic delay you can calculate the number of synapses involved we want to study different types of reflexes which basically have their basis in the spinal cord so these can be studied in a spinal animal a spinal animal preparation can be made by cutting the spinal cord from the medulla oblongata or from the brain so different spinal reflexes are first of all stretch reflex flexor withdrawal reflex cross extensor reflex scratch reflex positive supporting reflex and many supporting reflexes are there the stretch reflex it's also known as myotectic reflex or the muscle sphingeal reflex stretch reflex is a classical example of monosynaptic reflex here whenever a muscle is stretched it responds with contraction and this is the stretch reflex here the muscle stretch is the stimulus and con muscle contraction is the response so this can be shown by the help of the knee jerk reflex or knee tendon reflex you can see that whenever uh, this quadricep femoris tendon is struck with the hammer the muscle responds with stretch or its contraction here what happens is that impulses originate in the muscle spindle they are conducted by type 1a fibers which have cell bodies in the dorsal root ganglia where they directly go to the anterior gray matter the or neurons present in the anterior gray matter the alpha motor neurons which sends impulses efferent impulses via the motor nerve to the extra fusal fibers of the same muscle which is stretched and the muscle responds with contraction the monosynaptic pathway basically allows a reflex signal to return within a shortest possible delay back to the muscle this is we can see that the reflex is very fast and the neurotransmitter is glutamate there are no interneurons involved in the muscle stretch reflex an approximate reaction time is about 19 to 24 millisecond with a synaptic delay of only 0.5 millisecond because it's a monosynaptic reflex whenever a stretch reflex is initiated the impulses also go to the interneurons and these interneurons then relay in another set of alpha motor neurons which are antagonistic to the muscle which is stretched and these interneurons basically inhibit those muscles and the antagonistic muscles are basically the sensory receptors present in muscle are of two types muscle spindles and golgi tendon organs muscle spindles are present in the belly of the muscle they send information to the nervous system about the muscle length or change in the length of the muscle or the rate of change of length of the muscle while the golgi tendon organs they are present in the muscle tendons as the name suggests they transmit information about the tendon tension or the rate of change of tension so the muscle spindle tell you about the change in the rate of the length of the muscle as they are present in the muscle belly while the golgi tendon organs which are present in the tendons they are going to tell you the rate of change of the tension in the tendon because of their particular location so this way the muscles they play a role in their muscle control themselves that is the intrinsic muscle control the muscle spindles are basically the stretch receptors or sensory receptors they are also called as intrafusal fibers muscle fibers in a muscle which has more or more of muscle spindles the precision of movement of that muscle is better each muscle spindle is about 3 to 10 mm long its cylindrical or fusiform has approximately 3 to 12 tiny intrafusal muscle fibers the muscle spindle is covered with a glycocalyx and it surrounds it like a capsule and all around it is the extrafusal skeletal muscle fibers the muscle spindle in its central portion lacks actin and myosin while the uh, lateral portions which are striated they have the actin and myosin this is a diagram showing the muscle spindle with its innervation its location in the large extrafusal skeletal muscle fiber 
if you see clearly the muscle spindle is capsulated it is covered with a glycocalyx it's not easily shown in this diagram and it is present in the belly of the muscle it has its multiple fibers it is receiving the sensory innervation from group 1a and group 2 fibers and the gamma efferents are from the uh, two type of gamma efferents are there and the extra fusel muscle fibers they are receiving innervation from the alpha alpha motor neurons both. The muscle spindle fibers are also parallel to the extra fusel muscle fibers. So whenever the muscle is extra fusel muscle is stretched or contracted by lengthening or shortening, the striated poles are also stretched and con or contracted. So they pull along the central portions with them. So this is the way the central portions which are basically the sensory part they are stimulated. The muscle spindle has two types of fibers. One is the nuclear bag fibers and there is a nuclear chain fibers. The nuclear fi bag fibers have dilated central portion full of nuclei. Approximately there are two nuclear bag fibers per muscle spindle. These nuclear bag fibers are further of two types fiber 1 and fiber 2. Fiber 1 has low level of myosin ATPase activity so they respond best in the dynamic muscle stretch while the fiber 2 which has high level of myosin ATPase activity they respond their best during the static muscle stretch. Nuclear chain fibers are thinner, shorter with chain of nuclei approximately 3 to 9 in number. The nuclear chain endings are connected with the sides of the nuclear fibers. So basically they are attached with the nuclear bag fibers. Muscle spindle receives both sensory and motor innervation. The sensory innervation is received by the central non-contractile portion which is the receptor portion. It has no uh, striations. The sensory nerve endings are of two types, primary or endospiral endings and the secondly the flower spray endings. The primary endings they are single in number they are terminations of group 2, uh, terminations of group 1A fibers with a velocity of about 70 to 120 meters per second and a diameter of 17 micron. As the name suggests, they are like a spiral, so they wrap around the center of nuclear bag and the chain fibers. The primary spiral endings, they are stimulated by stretching of the muscle spindle. In the case of nuclear bag fibers, they show a dynamic response. So the sensory endings, they will discharge most rapidly during the onset of the stretch. So responding to both changes in the length of the muscle and velocity at, it, at which it is being stretched. So nuclear bag fibers show dynamic response. As far as nuclear chain fibers are concerned, they show a static response as the Sensory nerve endings, they discharge most rapidly throughout the period of sustained stretch responding during steady state of muscle contraction. In this diagram, we can see that there are two types of muscle spindle fibers, both nuclear bag and nuclear chain fibers. In the center of the nuclear bag fibers, it is a dilated portion, centrally dilated portion with a number of nuclei in the bag. While in the nuclear chain, there are about the chain of nuclei present in the nuclear chain fibers. The sensory endings, the group 1A fibers or the primary uh, spiral endings, they wrap around the center of both the nuclear bag and the nuclear chain fibers. They are single, you can see there is only single primary uh, efferent, that is 1A efferent. Talk of this, uh, this uh, group 2 fibers or the secondary efferent. They are multiple and see they are present only around the nuclear chain fibers that too at the polar portions not in the central portions. The gamma efferents there are two type of gamma efferents the dynamic as well as the static. The static they innervate both the nuclear big fibers and nuclear chain fibers and end like the trail endings. Trail endings that is a multiple branching are there present in the termination. If you see the dynamic uh, fibers dynamic gamma fibers they end only on the 
न्यूक्लियर बैग फाइबर्स एंड द एंड एज द ट्रेल एंड प्लेट एंडिंग प्लेट एंडिंग लाइक मोटर एंड प्लेट इज प्रेजेंट देयर इन द केस ऑफ द दिस डायनामिक गामा the sense second type of sensory innervation of muscle spindle is secondary or the flower spray endings there are about 6 to 8 in number the terminations uh, belong to group 2 fibers about 6 to 9 micron in diameter and velocity is lesser than the flower spray that is 30 to 70 meters per second and they are located basically near the polar ends of the nuclear chain fibers as the name indicates flower spray endings they are spread like a flower spray these ending respond to sustained stretch the motor innervation is by the gamma a gamma motor neurons which belong to small motor system as they have very small diameter about 3 to 6 micron they are also known as gamma efferents of descartes these gamma efferents are located at the ends of the muscle spindle they constitute about 30% of the fibers in the ventral root of a uh, spinal cord the gamma efferents are again of two types dynamic gamma efferents and static gamma efferents dynamic gamma efferents they terminate as plate endings on that is as motor end plates and located on the ends of the only the nuclear bag fibers second time of uh, motor innervation is by the static gamma innervation at the polar end of the nuclear chain fibers terminating as trail nerve endings that is extensive branched network of the fibers now what happens when the muscle is stretched when the extra fusel muscle fibers are stretched whenever you stretch a muscle muscle stretching will stretch the muscle spindle also how the muscle spindle is covered by a glycocalyx which is attached to the which is in parallel to the extra fusel muscle fibers so whenever you stretch a muscle fiber like a this uh, eliciting a reflex stretch a muscle fiber the polar portions of the muscle spindle they will be pulled along with the or stretched along with the skeletal muscle fibers so when they are pulled they will pull also pull or stretch the central portion of the muscle spindle which don't have any actinal myosin around the central portion or as present the primary nerve endings or the anulospiral nerve endings or group 1a nerve endings they their endings will be distorted the receptor portion will be distorted distorted and this leads to generation of the sensory uh, receptor potential generation of receptor potential will lead to generation of action potentials in the 1a efferent fibers which will be going to the dorsal root into the relaying into the anterior horn where is the presence of alpha motor neurons these alpha motor neurons will be stimulated as group 1a fibers directly terminate on the alpha motor neurons in the spinal cord these alpha motor neurons will carry send signals via its fibers to the same group of muscles extra fusel my fibers which were stretched and the muscle shows the response by the contract in the previous uh, slides we have seen that role of muscle spindle in the muscle contraction how the muscle stretch uh, leads to the response from the muscle spindle and causes the change in the muscle length so what is this muscle spindle uh, reflex response or muscle stretch reflex it is of two types dynamic stretch reflex and static stretch reflex the name indicates dynamic dynamic is its immediate sudden static is slow and continuous so they will come in picture depending upon the need of the muscle response so dynamic response or phasic response or acute response or dynamic stretch reflex will you call is seen when a muscle is suddenly stretched you suddenly stretch a muscle immediately 
strong signal will be transmitted to the spinal cord. This will lead to instantaneous uh, reflex contraction of the same muscle from which the reflex the signal originated. But after a sudden rapid discharge, there is fall in the rate of the discharge from the muscle even if the length muscle is being continuously stretched. So again I repeat, sudden stretch to muscle, muscle spindle being stretched, this stretching of the muscle spindle leads to uh, generation of action potential in the primary nerve ending surrounding the nuclear bag fibers. So rapid discharge of these fibers, efferents going to spinal cord causing efferent uh, impulses and strong reflex contraction of the muscle leading to change in the length of the muscle. So this will occur only during the change in the length of the muscle, onset and uh, change in the length of the muscle. Talking of static stretch reflex or static response, whenever there is slow stretch is applied to the muscle, response is elicited by continuous static signals, receptor signals being transmitted both by primary and secondary nerve endings from the nuclear chain fibers. Here the nuclear chain fibers are involved. So the discharge of impulses, they continue at a constant rate. They will uh, occur till the stretch is being maintained at excessive length. So the muscle contraction in turn opposes the force that is trying to cause the excessive length. So again I repeat slow stretch of the muscle both the primary and secondary nerve endings of nuclear chain fibers of muscle spindle they are stimulated impulses they go as a continuous discharge to the spinal cord and from the spinal cord there is the impulses come back to the muscle causing the reflex contraction of the muscle and this discharge is continuous. This is very very important for the control of the post. So the static response is responsible for the posture. It is responsible for the maintaining the posture because for long standing you have to uh, keep standing and you cannot keep on changing the length either shortening or lengthening. You have to maintain a certain certain uh, certain type of length so posture has to be maintained the muscles have to be uh, remain in contraction to maintain the posture otherwise what will happen you will fall down so the muscle spindle they act as length receptors maintaining the muscle length the spindle and its reflex connections they constitute a feedback device that operate to maintain a muscle length so Finally, now we are clear that muscle spindle are the length receptor maintaining the muscle length with its all connections, nuclear bag fibers, nuclear chain fibers, the primary and secondary nerve endings and the gamma efferent. We will be talking about the role of gamma efferents in my next uh, slides. So the nuclear bag fibers uh, give information about the change in the muscle length. They give information about the change in the muscle length. As far as the change in the muscle tension is concerned, it is the nuclear chain fibers. We were saying that mostly the muscle spindles are the fibers which give information about the change in the length. So some amount of muscle tension is also given by the change in the, by the nuclear chain fibers. So if the muscle is stretched, spindle discharge increases and reflex shortening is produced, whereas if the muscle is shortened without a change in gamma efferent discharge, spindle discharge decreases and muscle relaxes. So I again repeat if the muscle is stretched, spindle discharge will increase and there will be reflex shortening of the muscle. Whereas if the muscle is spindle is shortened, how will it shorten? It will shorten when the muscle is shortened. So without a change in the gamma efferent discharge, what will happen? It will decrease and the muscle relaxes. Now coming to another type of reflex is negative stretch reflex. This type of uh, the previous type of stretch reflex we can somewhat call it as a positive stretch reflex but this the other one this is the negative stretch reflex. When a muscle is suddenly shortened negative signals from spindles cause exactly opposite effect. Earlier what were, we, what were we saying when the muscle is stretched? Here we are saying when the muscle is suddenly shortened, negative signals from spindle cause exactly the opposite effect. 
so what we do is that a muscle which is already taught already taught means suppose you are lifting some weight some suppose you are lifting a uh, uh, two uh, things one is 5 kg another is 10 kg suddenly what you do is you remove the 5 kg weight you have only 10 kg weight so some load is released what will happen this allows the muscle to shorten then both dynamic and static reflex muscle inhibition will occur now the muscle need to be shortened earlier what was there there was more load you were having 5 and 10 kg 15 kg so the muscle need to be stretched muscle was stretched and it has so now the what will happen the load is decreased the muscle load need to stretch this much so this is the negative stretch reflex which is opposite to the shortening opposes the which opposes the shortening of the muscle in the same way that a positive stretch reflex opposes so the length opposes the lengthening of the muscle so the stretch reflex maintains the status quo for the length of the muscle so again i repeat in an already taught muscle some load is released muscle shortens it opposes the shortening of the muscle and the length is maintained so even if the uh, load is uh, like load is released so it tries to oppose the shortening of the muscle so basically the uh, muscle spindle plays a now let's talk about the role of gamma neurons about 30 to 31 percent of all the motor nerve fibers which uh, go to the muscles are gamma efferent fibers rather than the larger type of a alpha motor fibers the gamma neurons are also present in the anterior horn of the spinal cord and supply the muscle spindle at its peripheral portions or the polar regions where the where which is striated and has actin and myosin component so whenever there is activation of gamma motor neurons it leads to contraction of those peripheral part of the muscle spindle which has the actin and myosin whenever these peripheral portions of the muscle spindle they contract they pull or stretch the central part of the muscle spindle which is the receptor portion here there is presence of endospiral nerve endings or the primary nerve endings and they are stimulated with the generation of the receptor potential leading to generation of action potential in type 1 a efferent fibers which go via the dorsal route into the spinal cord then relaying in the alpha motor neurons in the anterior horn and efferent fibers from the alpha motor neurons then going to the spinal cord in the same muscle which in which the um, um, gamma motor neurons were causing the contract the actions of gamma motor neurons can be modified by direct control from higher centers in the brain and by other factors the facilitatory reticular formation it stimulates the gamma efferent gamma efferents while the inhibitory reticular formation from the higher centers it inhibits the gamma efferent neurons the cerebral cortex and cerebellum they inhibit the uh, gamma efferent activity by inhibiting the facilitatory reticular formation the other factors like anxiety can also affect the gamma efferent discharge it basically increases the gamma efferent discharge and this is the reason that in anxious individuals there can be hyperactivity of the tendon reflexes even the stimulation of skin by noxious agent can facilitate the gamma motor neuron activity so now we are very much clear about the role of gamma motor neurons in the stretch reflex so let us summarize the different functions of gamma motor neurons or roles of gamma motor neurons the first is prevention of the negative stretch reflex whenever the alpha motor neurons are stimulated from the higher centers or the signals from the higher centers are there to cause any voluntary muscle contraction most of the time simultaneously there are signals also reach the gamma motor neurons so when the muscles are skeletal muscles are contracting because of the direct impulses from the higher centers they contract and then the 
because the muscle spindles will also shorten but they don't contract so there is no stretch or no pull on the polar regions of the muscle spindle so because there is no contraction or pull of the polar region the central portion will not respond and it will stop sig sending signals or there will be decreased sensory signals from the group 1a uh, neurons to the alpha motor neurons and this will lead to decreased signals to the alpha motor neurons and this is known as unloading of the muscle spindle. So, the, now this is not beneficial for the central nervous system because then the central nervous system will stop receiving information about the rate and extent of the muscle shortening. So now as the gamma motor neurons have simultaneously received the signals from the higher centers, they will send signals to the polar end of the muscle spindle to cause contraction pulling the central non-polar regions or the receptive regions of the muscle spindle which will send which will send increased discharge of the spiral endings from the center to the alpha motor neurons and then there is also contraction of the skeletal muscle because of the muscle spindle so there will be no disparity. Now the gamma motor neurons they play a role both in dynamic as well as the static activity of the muscle spindle. So, the in the muscle spindle, most of the dynamic activity is a dynamic response or a phasic or velocity sensitive response is mediated by the nuclear fi bag fibers which are mediated by the dynamic gamma motor neurons and while the static activity which is mediated uh, by the nuclear chain fibers that is the length sensitive response is innervate they are in the, the length sensitive response is being mediated by the static gamma motor neurons so this uh, forms the part of the length servo mechanism that is servo mechanism now what is servo mechanism servo mechanism or servo is any automatic device here what we are talking is automatic device here the muscle spindle or the with its loop that is alpha and gamma motor neuron they form the automatic device so any automatic device that uses error sensing negative feedback to correct the action of a mechanism here also in a similar manner the gamma motor neurons they are correcting muscle spindle is uh, the gamma motor neurons are correcting this response so they form part of the length servo mechanism so they operate to maintain the muscle length during body movements regulation of posture uh, regulation of posture and then the basically the length of the muscle is maintained so that if there is any error this error is being corrected by the with this the muscle spindle along with its all its loop so, muscles can contract in a two ways which is clear to us now directly by stimulating the alpha motor neurons and indirectly by stimulating the gamma neurons. Whenever a voluntary muscle contraction occurs, the signals are transmitted from the higher center both to the alpha motor neurons as well as the gamma motor neuron simultaneously. So, this is called as co-activation of alpha gamma motor neuron or alpha gamma motor neuron linkage or alpha gamma linkage. This causes both the extrafusal and the intrafusal muscle fibers to contract at the same time and maintain the length relationship of the muscle. Now, during the muscle contraction, let us take a picture that only the alpha motor neurons are stimulated. So during the muscle contraction, the skeletal muscle is going to shorten. When the skeletal muscle shorten, this will shorten the muscle spindle also. But there will be no stretching of the muscle spindle. So, this will lead to decrease activity of the muscle spindle. So, no signals or decreased signals will go to the alpha motor neurons and this can decrease the activity of the skeletal muscle. This is known as unloading of the muscle spindle. But, but here as the gamma motor neurons are also stimulated so 
this negative stretch reflex is opposed by the gamma motor neurons gamma motor neurons they cause the contraction of the polar ends of the muscle spindle which stretches the non polar or the receptor portion of the muscle spindle which increases the signal output from the primary sensory endings of the muscle spindle to the alpha motor neurons thus enhancing the sensitivity of the stretch reflex leading to that is loading of the muscle spindle so it forms the part of the follow up servo mechanism this servo assist mechanism is very important for load responsiveness so let us discuss this servo assist mechanism as we discussed earlier most of the voluntary muscle contractions mediated by the central nervous system occur because of simultaneous contraction of extra physical intra physical muscle fibers because of alpha and gamma motor neuron stimulation now sometimes there can be mismatch between task and command let us take an example of lifting of weights when the you have to lift certain weights you don't know exactly that how much weight you have to lift and uh, the command from the central nervous system is different so you are trying to lift weight with the extra, uh, skeletal muscle fibers so the extra physical muscle fibers fail to contract to the desired length which you require so you are trying to lift the weight so there is unequal contraction of the extra physical and intra physical muscle fibers because the weight will cause the the weight will cause the load on the skeletal muscle and this will cause disparity in contraction of extra physical and intra physical muscle fibers resulting in the stretch of the intra physical muscle fibers now the gamma motor neurons come into picture they stimulate the central portion and then the central portion is pulled and it sends impulses to the alpha motor neurons to cause the contraction so basically gamma motor neurons are modifying the stretch reflex and cause extra excitation of extra physical muscle fibers by loading of muscle spindle causing the forceful muscle contraction to perform the command so this change in alpha motor neuron activity at the spinal cord level is the basically part of the follow up servo mechanism causing the desired contraction of the extra fusion contraction of the extra fusion fibers to contract now the central nervous system uses this servo assist mechanism to readjust the command in its subsequent signals what are the advantages of servo assist mechanism it allows the brain to cause a muscle contraction and act against a load without the nervous system using much of the extra nervous energy because most of the energy is being provided by the spindle reflex then secondly the desired length of the muscle can be maintained even when the load is increased or decreased between successive contractions that it it would that is it would make the length of the contraction less load sensitive thirdly it can compensate for fatigue or other abnormalities of the muscle itself because any failure on the part of the muscle to provide the proper contraction would elicit an additional muscle spindle reflex stimulus to make the contraction to occur the third role is that there is a there is gamma loop involved in which theoretically if you if the higher centers only stimulate the gamma neurons still they are capable of causing the muscle contraction because the loop begins from the gamma motor neurons going to the intrafusal muscle fibers stretching the central part then pulses from one a fibers going to the alpha motor neurons and causing the contraction so gamma loop but most of the time gamma loop works along with the alpha motor neurons because simultaneously both alpha and the gamma motor simultaneously both alpha and gamma motor neurons are stimulated let us now study the functions of muscle spindle some of the functions of muscle spindle are stretch reflex maintenance of muscle tone 
damping mechanism, servo cyst function, maintenance of length of skeletal muscle and a receptor function that is a proprioceptive function. The first function, the stretch reflex, we have already discussed in detail. So, I will not be repeating it again. Second action is the or second function is the muscle tone. So, how will you define muscle tone? Muscle tone is the resistance of muscle to any sorts of stretch or we can also define it as a state of partial contraction of the muscle at rest. That is the muscle is even at rest is in a state of partial contraction. Muscle tone can be seen in all the muscles of the body but it is most pronounced in the anti-gravity muscles. The muscle tone is dependent on the stretch reflex. At rest, there is a slight stretch or slight discharge of the muscle spindles which leads to slight excitation of the alpha motor neurons leading to the skeletal muscle in a state of partial contraction or in a partial or they are maintained in a partial state of contraction which is the tone. The whenever there is interruption of this stretch reflex either by uh, disruption of the motor or sensory nerve to the muscle, the muscle becomes flaccid or a muscle in which the resistance to stretch is increased, the muscle is said to be in a hyperactive or hypertonic state. In between those, these two stages of tone that is hyper active and flaccid is the normal tone. Now the abnormalities of the muscle tone can be, there can be hypotonia. Hypotonia means decrease in muscle tone or we can say the muscles are in a flaccid state. A flaccid muscle will offer no resistance to stretch, that is there is low resistance to stretch. So hypotonia can occur when there is decrease in the gamma efferent discharge leading to hypoactive stretch reflex. So causes can be interruption in the efferent or the efferent pathway of the stretch reflex which can occur because of lower motor neuron paralysis or interruption in the efferent pathway due to injuries, diseases like poliomyelitis or interruption of the efferent pathways due to diseases like syphilis causing tabis dorsalis. Stimulation of inhibitory control of gamma neurons can also lead to the uh, hypotonia like this can occur when the inhibitory reticular formation is stimulated or the another mechanism is by inhibition or destruction of stimulatory control of gamma neurons due to here the stimulatory control is the facilitatory reticular formation which can be destroyed or its pathway to the gamma motor neurons can be interrupted or they can be inhibited by cerebral cortex or by cerebellum. Another cause of hypotonia is sleep. During sleep the gamma efferent discharge decreases. Then certain drugs like barbiturates and other sedatives when given in higher dosage can lead to hypotonia. Another abnormality of tone is hypotonia. Hypertonia means increase in muscle tone. Here there is high resistance to stretch and there is increase in the gamma efferent discharge leading to hyperactive stretch reflex. The causes can be due to upper motor neuron paralysis or stimulation of gamma motor neurons from higher centers that is excessive activity of the facilitatory reticular formation. Another cause of hypertonia is destruction or inhibition of inhibitory control of gamma motor neurons that is any interruption in the pathway of inhibitory reticular formation or its destruction can lead to in decrease in the inhibition of the gamma motor neuron activity. Miscellaneous factors which increase gamma efferent discharge like anxiety, noxious stimuli etc. The hypertonia 
is basically of two types spasticity and rigidity in spasticity only one group of muscles are involved that is hypertonicity only of one group of muscles either flexors or extensors this is generally seen in the upper motor neuron paralysis in the case of rigidity both group of muscles are equally involved like extensors and flexors this is generally seen in the basal ganglion disorders another important function of the muscle spindle via stretch reflex is to prevent some type of oscillations or jerkiness of body movement as the impulses coming from the cerebrum are in a jerky manner or they come in bursts so this function is called as the dampening or the smoothing function signals from different parts of the nervous system are transmitted to the muscle in a very unsmooth fashion either increasing in intensity for few seconds then decreasing in intensity in another second thus always changing the intensity level but because of the presence of stretch reflex mediated via the muscle spindle its effect on alpha neurons doesn't result in the oscillatory signals as the oscillatory signals are changed via the muscle spindle into smooth contraction of the muscles but if due to any reason the dorsal root is cut then the response of the muscle becomes jerky as the stretch reflex is being interrupted next function of muscle spindle is servo assist function or load responsiveness we have already discussed this function in detail in previous slides the so another function of the muscle spindle is maintenance of the length of the skeletal muscle so whenever there is any passive stretch of the muscle so this leads to restoration of the muscle length because of the muscle spindle acting through the gamma efferents so it acts as a muscle spindle acts as a feedback device to maintain the skeletal muscle tone this also helps to stabilize the body position during tense motor action so whenever a body has to maintain a particular position the facilitatory reticular formation sends excitatory signals to the gamma motor neurons and then to the intrafusal muscle fibers so the signals from the intrafusal muscle fibers to the alpha motor neurons increases that is the signal output from the muscle fiber spindles they increase so stimulation of muscle spindle occurs on both sides of the joint so both sides of the joint are in a better position that is the skeletal muscle of both sides of the joint are have have increased tone so the joint is fixed and the posture can be maintained so this helps in maintaining the posture and also the maintenance of voluntary movements as the joints are fixed during the voluntary movements and this is another function of the muscle spindle the proprioceptive function of the muscle spindle is very important to maintain the different activity of the muscle or postures of the body so it has the role to play in conscious proprioceptive sensations because it sends signals via the posterior column tracts to the higher centers for the this particular type of sensation it also plays role in the unconscious proprioceptive sensations and sends signals to the higher brain via the ventral and dorsal spinocerebellar tracts and thus has its outcome in the final muscle contractions the rest of the uh, functions uh, rest of the uh, part of this particular topic that is the clinical application of the stretch reflex different type of the reflexes the golgi tendon organs and the properties of the stretch reflex will be dealt in the subsequent presentations thank you